Eric this Olson, conference sorry, will now be recorded. Late. Oh, hi, Eric. How are you? Good, good. Um, and we're going to go around and do introductions in a minute. So hold that uh, thought, and we'll we'll get everybody on here. Um, so the you can see um, this this is a fairly large area, but it doesn't include all of Prince George's County. We're in the process right now of having a conversation about what it would look like if we expanded to the rest of the county and how complicated that might be. Um, and the other thing that we have is the Heritage Center. That's located in the Pyramid Atlantic Arts Center uh, in Hyattsville. And that's where our main office is located. Um, and, and, you know, that's where we would normally be working out of. Um, and you can't go see the car there now. The car has been taken out. That was for a special event. But we do have um, information and brochures and all sorts of things there um, for, for folks to see. Okay, so let, that's, that's the background to the organization and the background to us. Um, and so before we kind of dive into the rest of this, um, let's go ahead around the horn and uh, have everybody do their introductions. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the, um, the participant list and I am just gonna go down the list. Um, if you're not able to um, uh, get back to your mute quick enough, that's all right, we can come back to folks. Um, so let me start, um, I see uh, Amy is the first person on my list. Uh, hi, this is Amy Olivo with um, Council Member Danielle Glaros' office. Thanks so much for pulling this together, Aaron. Thank you. Um, I think I see uh, Jack is next. Uh, Pizella? Yeah, hi, I'm Jack Pizella. I represent uh, the DC Rec Trails Committee on uh, the Capital Trails Coalition. Uh, next, I see Jordan. Hey, how you doing? I'm Jordan Exantis. I'm the uh, park planner for the Northern Area Department of Parks and Rec. Thank you. Uh, Karen? Hey, good morning. I'm Karen McAllister. Um, I'm a county resident. Um, I specifically bought my home because walkability was a, uh, a big, it was very important to me. So I bought my house near a trail, lots of trails actually. Um, and then professionally, I'm a bike and ped planner. Um, and one of my favorite projects was Capital Bike Share, installing it along our trails in Prince George's County. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Katie Hart. Hi, everybody. Um, I work for the City of College Park in the planning department. Great. Uh, Laura. Good morning, I'm Laura Conley and I'm with the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission. Great. Um, where did I leave off? Uh, Lillian. Lillian put her what? introduction in the chat. She said she doesn't have a mic on her work desktop. <laughs> Got it, all right, excellent. So Lillian is the community planner for the city of Hyattsville. Great, thanks for catching that. <laughs> uh, Luke. Benson. Uh, yeah, I'm Luke Benson. I also work for the City of College Park in the planning department. Oh, great. Fantastic. Uh, Marion. All right, we'll give Marion a minute. Um, Melissa Daston. Melissa Daston from Councilman Tom Dernoga's office. Oh, hi. How are you? Uh, Doing great. Michael Jackson. Hello, I am um, with Maryland National Capital Park and Planning. And um, previously, I was um, the Director of Bicycle and Pedestrian Access with the Maryland Department of Transportation. And in that role, had some experience um, working with tourism um, trail issues, um, specifically with the Canal Towns program along the Potomac River. And I was able to get Maryland's first two U.S. bicycle routes designated, U.S. 50, bike route U.S. 50 and bike route U.S. 11 um, through um, Western Maryland. Indeed, I'm, I was thrilled to see you this morning. Welcome and uh, know that we'll probably end up leaning on you a little bit. <laughs> okay. Glad to be of, of assistance. Great. Uh, Najina. We'll give her a second. Najina, 
Hi, uh, yes. Good oh. morning. I'm here. Can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Go ahead. Hi, I am Nagina Jackson. I'm with um, Experience Prince George's. I um, serve as the Destination Services and Special Events Manager and happy to join you all this morning. Thank you. Uh, Marion, I see your um, item about uh, audio. If um, you may want to just jump off of the connection and then jump back in, and that sometimes does the, what you need to do to reset it. So uh, I'll keep an eye out for whenever you come back. Uh, all right, Bob Patton. Hello, uh, I'm the trail program manager for the Department of Parks and Recreation. Great. Sarah Lipsy. Hi, I'm Sarah Lipsy. I am chair of the Mount Rainier Green Team. Steph. Hello, good morning, everybody. My name is Stephanie Paperno, and I am the Trails Coalition Manager for the Capital Trails Coalition. Thank you. Um, I think it's still May Mayor James. You're next. Good morning. Keisha James here with the town of Bladensburg. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you. And uh, last, we have uh, Thomas Zyla. Yes, hi, my name is Tom Zyla. I'm the pro uh, project manager for the Central Avenue Connector Trail, and I work with the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission, Prince George's County, Department of Parks and Recreation. Wonderful, thank you. And and Eric Olson is here. Uh, oh, right, our college. college. College Park City University Partnership. Great, and uh, do we have a second caller? Um, yeah, this is this is Kyle Lowen, Parks and Recreation, National State Police Force Division. Oh, and hi, Kyle. Hey, Aaron. Anybody else I didn't catch? All right, I think that was it. That was should be on my callers and everybody else. All right, perfect. Uh, Marion, are you back yet? Guessing not. All right, we will keep it moving then. All right, so the 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 reason we have called you all here today is um, largely because of the community investment tax credit, and that may seem like a weird way to get at this, but that's how we got here. Um, so our organization applied for and received tax credits from the state of Maryland. Um, that is for anyone who has a Maryland tax liability, personal or uh, organ or corporate. And if anybody donates $500 or more to our organization, they get half of that contribution back as a tax credit on their end of year taxes. And all proceeds that we receive from that contribution will be used to fund trail tourism projects, particularly Grace's position in supporting any supplies that she might need to operate that program. We have received $3,000, which translates to $1,500 worth of credits. We have another $8,500 worth of credits that we have to be able to sell uh, by the end of calendar year 21. So by uh, January of, or uh, excuse me, December of next year. Um, and so A, if you have a reason that you wanna contribute money, we're always looking for those, but um, it is also part of the, um, the reason why this whole program exists in the first place is because we said we were going to help promote trail tourism as an economic development method um, through our organization. And that's, that's how we ended up with this uh, position that uh, Grace has. Um, so I will bump over to uh, Grace's position. And so Grace's position, the goal of her position is a, uh, a kind of a central point of contact, much in the way that um, Steph's position, oh, sorry, much in the way that Steph's position uh, is all about working with the Capital Trails Coalition, Grace's position is sort of similar here within our organization to um, work specifically because the Heritage Area Program is about tourism. This is very specifically about um, trail tourism. Um, she's going to be working on a um, um, milestone marker program uh, that um, we have funded. Um, all right, I don't know why Marianne's coming in. I'm getting all kinds of warning signs. Um, a, a program that the uh, planning assistance for municipalities and communities uh, has funded called the milestone markers. Um, we haven't quite kicked that off yet. 
um, our Heritage Center. She's been working to develop uh, programs through the Heritage Center as kind of a key starting point for any trail uh, activities, including uh, trail tours. We were going to hold a trail tour uh, this year, but we have decided against it. Just the complexities of COVID just have sort of ruled that out. And then any workshops that we may hold in there that are related to this. So a whole mixture of, of things that are on her plate, but largely focused with this idea of heritage, economic development, tourism, et cetera. So Grace, I don't know if you want to give them a moment of your uh, background. Yeah, I'm Grace. I started in this new position uh, at the beginning of July, but I started interning with Erin and Marilyn Milestones back in September of last year. I recently graduated from the University of Maryland with my master's in historic preservation. And I have a background in um, like event production and um, historic site management and interpretation. And probably the, the, the most important part is that she's got a very cool travel trailer to go drive around the country and visit things. So she's into yeah. tourism, even if she didn't know she was into tourism. <laughs> so um, we, we, we made sure to bring Grace on board and um, helped uh, pull this position together. So um, we're trying to set ourselves in a place. Um, and the other thing I'll mention just before we really move on is, is that um, we, while our organization is focused on tourism and doing tourism um, development, we are not the county's tourism marketing organization. That is Experience Prince George's, which Najina represents. And um, we, what we do is we're trying to develop products in some way that the folks at the Experience Prince George's can promote. Um, so that's really where this is kind of coming from, is that idea of developing some products that make things a little bit easier. The other thing to note is, is that we are not park and planning. We have some agreements with park and planning. We have some projects that have been funded through them. We work extensively with park and planning, but we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And as a result, we don't um, anticipate anything that is a direct recommendation or a direct impact on trails and the things that parks owns. What we really see is a, a, the idea that where the edge of parks owned land is, is where we pick up and help bring things into the communities and municipalities. We see ourselves as a, uh, as a connector between the two. Um, now, it could be that we're looking at a trail and we say, wouldn't it be great if it had X, Y, and Z on it? We might be able to get with Bob or Jordan or Kyle or somebody like that and say, hey, wouldn't it be great if we did this? But that is not our responsibility to maintain and operate those trails. Um, let's pull that real quick. Uh, apologies, if, if somebody has some noise in the background, I'm gonna mute you, so just be ready for that. Um, so all of that um, aside, those caveats aside, um, and, and we will have much more conversation about that towards the end. I'm gonna go ahead and let Grace take a minute uh, I'm going to go grab myself a drink of water and let her uh, chat for just a second about some of the things that she's found about trail tourism programs um, in the past or, or in, that are, are out there. So I'm, I'm on the uh, forward button, Grace. You just tell me when to hit next. Okay. So what is trail tourism? Traditional trail tourism provides a themed journey that links historical, natural, and commercial sites within an area or region. Essentially, trail tourism promotes economic development through trail usage. Next slide, please. Erin, next slide. Thank you. Successful trail tourism does not happen by accident, but through study and effort. A trail in its community must be assessed for tourism assets, such as historic sites and restaurants, but must also be evaluated for improvement needs. Successful programs create reasons for trail users to stay overnight, such as big events. If successful, these events would bring users back on an annual basis. What are some successful examples that we can look at for our guidance in developing our own program? Next slide, please. A very popular example of the Trail Towns program for tourism related economic development is the Great Allegheny Passage. This is a 
150 mile long trail from Cumberland, Maryland to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And it was built on old abandoned railroad grades. Um, the organization that manages it is the Allegheny Trail Alliance, which is a nonprofit. And this program uh, provides a lot of guidance and plans for the development of similar trail tourism uh, programming. It is very rural, so it's not the urban environment that we have in Prince George's County. Um, but this program really highlights the towns along the trail, parking, eating, sleeping, water, and other amenities. It's more of a destination. People travel far to complete the whole thing, and then they will sometimes add on the CNO Canal um, to this excursion. Next slide, please. Uh, just before I continue on, I'm going to jump in for just a second and, and really emphasize that point that while these folks have figured it out, this is the, the system that is the model, it's the gold standard in many ways across the nation for long distance trails. We're maybe not quite at a long distance trail uh, version, and we are certainly not in that rural landscape. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a different beast um, in some ways, um, but there are elements of it that, that really make sense. And this is where I asked Grace to kind of start her investigation into these systems because it is the gold standard. The next example I have is the Indianapolis Cultural Trail in uh, Indiana. Uh, this is an eight mile trail that was built on the city of Indianapolis's right of way to promote the city's cultural assets. That was their main goal was promoting the cultural assets. So it is managed by the Indianapolis Cultural Trail Incorporated, which is a nonprofit. And uh, the map here highlights bike share locations, public art installments, and public green spaces. So it's really just designed for the uh, cultural assets of the city of Indianapolis. Uh, next slide, please. And again, jumping back in, um, even though this is just one city, the sort of the size and distance is a little bit closer to what we're thinking about in terms of our scale, but again, is very urban. So this goes the entirely opposite direction. What we liked about it was really that, that focus on cultural activities, arts and nature, or arts and history, and how those, those pieces get brought together. Um, again, a little bit different, but um, sort of the, it gives you a sense of, of the scale that these trail systems can be. And the last example is the Minuteman Trail, which is in Boston. It is a 10 mile rail trail that runs from the Alewife T station outside of Boston to Bedford, Massachusetts. It's in uh, you know, a very urban environment, just like what we have here in Prince George's County. Uh, it is managed by the four communities that it goes through, and it is used for both transportation and recreation. So it's less of, less of a destination trail, like the Great Allegheny Passage, and more of a everyday usage trail um, by residents or day trippers. Um, it's very easy since it's connected to one of the T stations to um, get to. You can get to the you know, downtown Boston from the trail. So it's you know, good for connectivity like that. Uh, this map highlights ice cream shops, bike shops, restrooms, and points of interest that are located uh, along the trail. So how can we take these ideas and adapt them to our needs? Next slide, please. Uh, and just really quick, um, again, this is, um, as Grace just mentioned, these are, this is probably closer to what we've been doing with the uh, trolley trail um, and, and the similarities of some of our trails around here. So we've got to kind of mix all these different ideas together. So there are plenty of assessment tools available from organizations like Rails to Trail and the Great and the Allegheny Trail Alliance. These include evaluating access, user safety, uh, business promotions, and commercial hub design. These tools are all provided to serve as self-assessments for communities looking to improve their trail tourism base. 
It will be essential in helping us move forward. Uh, this slide has two resources. The, the orange header is from the Great Allegheny Passage and the one on the right is provided by uh, the Rails to Trails program. Um, and it's related to access and safety. So a couple of the main things here are, is it easy to find access between the trail and the town? Are there bike lanes and sidewalks in good condition? Um, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, next slide, please. And, and part of this idea is, is that we're going to be looking at, at how we can evaluate this information. And I, I think it's important, again, to go back to that idea that we're not the ones who are operating the trail, but we want to make sure that we have an evaluation of, you know, the location, in the second question here, what's the location of the trail compared to the business district? Is it right through town? Is it on the edge of town? Is it across a bridge, up or down a hill? Is it easy to find? Uh, are there, uh, you know, boat launches or uh, gateways of some type, you know, so this type of questions are really going to be uh, critical to kind of creating a baseline of information um, that we'll be able to use to uh, look at what tourism resources really need to be developed within the communities. Uh, and this slide provides um, a jumping off point for assessing businesses. So um, are employees of different businesses knowledgeable about the trails nearby? Do businesses cross promote each other? Um, do businesses in one municipality know about the businesses in the other? Um, you know, that sort of connectivity from the business uh, standpoint. Uh, next slide, please. Of course, one of the complexities with this one is, is that um, this is going to require a little bit of going into places. Um, and so we may not be able to get all of this done, but um, the intention really is going to be um, probably working with those communities that have economic development uh, or, or planning type of folks to get a sense from them on some of this information and doing some surveys with others. Um, and looking at, you know, the, there's a question on here about um, can employees answer questions about the town region attractions? Who did you talk to in the conversation remarks? So that's going to require a little bit of work um, to make sure that we have some of those right questions and probably talking with the folks from Great Allegheny Passage to find out what sorts of questions make the best sense to, to talk. Um, and, and determining whether or not we, we need to go to that level of depth. So some of this is still very much in development, but uh, that's sort of the concept. And this is the last sort of example of the assessments. Um, just the overall appearance of the town. Does it look clean? Is it um, welcoming to visitors? Is do visitors feel safe there? Um, uh, next slide, please. Sorry, hang on. Let me, uh, I just want to make sure we, we hit a mute here. Okay. There we go. So in my role as Trail Tourism Program Manager for Maryland Milestones, I've already begun outlining some of our assets. Um, in this map, I've noted the commercial hubs in northern Prince George's County marked by the yellow stars. Uh, this includes downtowns and shopping centers. If you see that I've missed any, just uh, let me know after. Um, our focus will be starting out. Our focus will be on the trolley trail, the northeast branch, Indian Creek, and the extension of that that goes into Greenbelt. We will also be looking at the WBNA trail. I'll be assessing these trails with the assessment strategies as outlined uh, by the Great Allegheny Passage and Rails to Trails assessment tools, um, but I will be adapting some of those assessments as they relate to our specific area. And, and just jumping back in, I, we might end up getting into the Northwest and Sligo Creek um, as we go along, uh, but at the moment, that's not necessarily where we're starting. Um, and then Paint Branch, we sort of have to include a portion of it by default just because of uh, College Park, but um, we're going to evaluate that as we go along. It, it may not include the entire extension all the way up into Beltsville, 
but it may include this portion that at least gets up to the beltway. Um, but that we just started with sort of the easier ones. Oops, sorry. We just started with the easier ones along Indian Creek, Northeast Branch, and um, the trolley trail. And 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 as um, Eric or Stuart would tell you, um, we've already done quite a bit of heavy lifting um, uh, with those uh, with all the partners. Um, the the brochure that this came from, the Rhode Island Avenue Trolley Trail brochure, um, was an effort that started out um, coming from uh, the College uh, Park City University Partnership, and um, and then also uh, Hyattsville CDC. So um, you know partnerships are going to be a, a super valuable part of this, um, and making sure that we can get there and and leverage those resources. Um, because we're not necessarily an organization that does economic development, but we do tourism, which is a part of economic development. So it's kind of a slicing the pie thin here, um, splitting hairs, I suppose we would say, but um, it's, it's, we're just trying to make sure that we're working within the boundaries of all of our partners. Um, we have a lot of people that are doing different things and we wanna make sure that we're doing them together. So what is next for us, especially in light of COVID-19? Um, we can provide workshops and trainings with businesses, um, you know, just educating them on the tourism around them, the trails that are closest to them. Um, we can also provide stickers for businesses to put in their windows, maybe advertising that they're a part of our program. Um, we can promote our trails and local businesses to our residents, day trippers, and overnight visitors. Um, we could hold virtual races or challenges. Uh, this could involve community and regional visitors. We could partner with the Maryland Department of Transportation for their Walktober month-long event. Uh, we can adapt the Greenway Games model that the East Coast Greenway uses. This is a registered event that uh, people pay to register for and you can come up with any challenge you want like reading poetry, doing push-ups, um, singing as long as it is happening on the trail and uh, people will enter to win that on social media with a specialized hashtag. We could offer business promotions to trail users and we could also create uh, themed routes through our trails with included within with recommendations for um, stops uh, like the brew loop. So some this, of, oh, go ahead. Right. I was going to say some of you may remember that brew loop concept we started to work on was the idea of uh, beers and um, uh, coffee as a way of doing it, and we've kind of put that on the shelf just for the moment while uh, Grace has gotten herself up to speed. Yeah, so this is a developing program and. We would be more than happy to hear your ideas and we want to collaborate uh, to make this a really great program. So uh, what do you all want to see in your community for tourism? Thank you, Grace, that, that's spectacular. And, and, and we'll go ahead and start having uh, some conversation. I did see a couple of people pop in. Uh, Tiffany Jennings, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, actually, I've been on the call. I'm not sure why my camera all of a sudden popped up, but um, hello, everyone. I'm Tiffany Jennings with the Prince George's County Department of Public Works and Transportation, and I am the um, Bicycle and Pedestrian Program Manager with DPWNT. Thank you. Great. Uh, I also saw David Helms come in. Yes, sir. Uh, just a uh, uh, Resident of uh, Montgomery County, Four Corners, uh, working bicycle and pedestrian safety advocacy and uh, uh, working with Maryland Milestones and Capital, Crest, uh, Capital Trails Coalition uh, to kind of uh, kind of build the relationships uh, between Prince George's County and, and Montgomery County. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and then did we get one more caller maybe that came in? Maybe not. Hard for me to tell. The callers always throw me for a little bit. Um, oh, Marion, yes, please. Uh, do you have uh, audio back? Marion? <laughs> She's still having troubles with that audio. 
Well, Marion, if you do get it back, feel free to just break in at any time and, and introduce yourself. Um, meanwhile, um, I would love to um, just see if uh, folks uh, feel free to, to speak up um, and uh, tell us. I'm going to um, change that over. There's Grace's contact information if you need it. Pretty simple, grace at anacostiatrails.org. Um, and she would be uh, definitely somebody you would want to contact. Um, and you can chat with a little bit more about um, ideas that you might have. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll just give you another second to make sure you've got that email. Again, it's grace at anacostiatrails.org. And then I am going to stop sharing the screen and uh, turn myself back on. Um, not that you need to see me, but whatever. Um, so who has uh, thoughts, comments, questions about what you would like to see as it relates to trails? And again, we don't care whether they're, they're bike or walk. And honestly, this can even get extended into things like water trails. I saw, Bob, you posted in the chat there about um, the idea of kayak and bike combos um, as an idea. So there's some different ways for us to do this. Um, but we'd love to get your ideas if folks have some some thoughts out there. Hi, Aaron. Um, if I can jump in, please. Uh, hi, yes. Um, um, I did have a quick question for Grace, but I'll just go through a couple of thoughts real quick, and then I'll circle back to the uh, to the question. Uh, one successful trail promoter was David Dion, who um, was with. Um, Anne Arundel County Parks and Rec. And this is the Baltimore and Annapolis Trail. And Dave said um, his, his theory was you build the trail into the community, then you build the community into the trail. Um, some of the things that he did was he'd organize Eagle Scouts to build um, um, trail bulletin boards as, um, as projects. And he had a competition among garden, garden clubs to build um, of uh, flower beds and compete with the best looking flowers along the trail. Um, another way of promoting, which is very inexpensive, are the use of lamppost banners in your communities. Um, they are, um, last time I checked, they were around $200 a banner with design built in. And um, Long Beach, California has been very successful in using um, those types of banners. Um, you might want to. I'm um, certainly um, coordinating with um, DPW and with um, Tiffany Jennings to help build those trail roadway connections and on-road bikeways as well. Because you do, you know, the trails can serve as a backbone, but you want to get people out into the rest of the uh, communities as well. And you may want to look at your bike parking needs. Um, do you have good bike parking at the businesses and places that you want to uh, visit? So those are some quick comments. And Gail, I mean, Grace, my question to you is, on your Rhode Island Avenue trolley trail map, they had some uh, prominent yellow stars. What did they represent? Those represented uh, big commercial hubs like downtowns and shopping centers. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. And, and certainly if folks are um, have question, uh, have thoughts that they're not really feeling like they want to speak up, I'm seeing Sarah and Marion putting some ideas over there. Um, so please definitely keep on uh, on throwing them over there and we're going to keep an eye on those as well. Uh, other folks have thoughts on, on ways we can use trails as it relates to tourism. Glancing over here at Marion. Uh, working with the Star Spangled Banner trails to, as it goes through Bladensburg. Uh, Bladensburg Waterfront Park is the only kind on the Anacostia. Uh, yep, absolutely. Um, small community. Oh, Sarah, yeah. Uh, I think this is an important one, Sarah, is, is the uh, small communities on the southernmost section, Mount Rainier, Brentwood, North Brentwood, um, could participate, even though the main trails aren't quite uh, contiguous to us. And, and actually, that is a really important one, because I think that if we look at, um, I, I'm just going to pick on Brentwood for a second, because of the Arts Center there, um, the Arts Center could be a very good draw uh, for folks. But to get there, you sort of have to work your way through town, sort of back out of town to the Arts Center. 
So how that connection works and sort of these longer connections from the trail into the resources is going to be a big uh, question and, and how we make those those pieces work. So I think that is is very important. Yeah, and then, you know, in Brentwood, North Brentwood, Mount Rainier, we've got some little trail pieces like the Levy Trail and whatnot. They just don't connect quite. So virtual events can help highlight those, even though it's not really quite part of the main connection and trail connections at this time as well. Yep, absolutely. Agree on that. Um, so uh, Amy just uh, mentioned uh, dozens and dozens of friends who have, quote unquote, discovered the trails during the pandemic. They can't believe they've been this close this whole time. And, and, and I really do think that that is the case. Um, I don't know if folks saw, I think, um, I think it was Juan uh, Williams from Hyattsville put a, a letter to the editor in the newspaper about how the trails were so crowded. Um, it was sort of in response to the CTC's effort to expand the amount of trails in the region. And he posted, he said, well, I don't know how I feel about that because there's just so many people out there. I can't even enjoy the trails. Um, it was sort of a, a weird angle to come at. I, don't necessarily agree on how we attack the particular issue, but um, the trails are definitely getting very, very busy. So um, it's it, it, people are discovering them. People are going to recognize them. Um, and 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 I think one of the really um, great examples is actually what uh, Mike Franklin is doing. Um, and and shout out Hyattsville Planning Department and and what you all have been done been able to do. But he's um, building a tiki bar. Um, right where the trail is, um, the, the Rhode Island Avenue Charlie Trail, um, and um, has his outdoor seating. Um, so we're definitely seeing, at least for the next couple of months, um, that businesses are looking for outside seating. And if that trail um, aspect can work with it, is is going to be important. Um, so yeah, what are some other ideas that folks have seen that it might be trail tourism? Karen, could I... Yeah. Chime in. This is Dave Holmes. Hey, uh, there. You know, I was chatting with the Park Police and Bob Patton, uh, and I formed a Facebook group uh, for the uh, Sligo Creek uh, and Northwest Branch trails uh, to, you know, the, the Anacostia River Trail and Lake Artemisia is pretty well covered, but that part on the Northwest Branch. Uh, not so much, and we've got over 100 members now and haven't really, uh, and I'll, I'll share the link if anybody cares. But uh, one of the concerns folks had is, you know, what, you know, what is inhibiting you from using the trail? What are you concerned about? Uh, and so, you know, my, my approach to making things beautiful is getting rid of, get rid of the warts, uh, you know, and, and if we want to make uh, you know, more people using the, the resources that are kind of latent in Prince George's County, you know, I think you got to address the issues. Uh, you know, one of the issues is, you know, just having trail markers. Uh, and, and Bob, uh, and this is kind of an E911 trail marker, uh, so that if you do have an issue out there, uh, you can identify what happened and where it happened and get uh, it might be a 311 issue or it might be a law enforcement issue where, you know, somebody's in distress and has a, a crash or whatever. Uh, and, and I strongly encourage uh, advocacy to, to make sure that we have a E911 compliant trail marker. And then again, Bob can chime in, but I'll say a few more things, Bob. Uh, the and there's lots of benchmarks out there of various trail systems th throughout the country that that we have there's also uh the the trail ambassador program that has been discussed uh you know how do we make people you know we, we, i think we ought to offer premier services uh for our trails that's how we're gonna you know get people out there utilizing it and enjoying uh, you know, the pubs and the donut shops and the coffee and, and the festivals, uh, we want to bring them in. Uh, and I think, you know, the, the Waba folks have a good relationship with the District of Columbia and their trail ambassador program that has been proposed. I think it should be, uh, it should definitely be kind of considered and approved, uh, on, on the highest 
uh, use uh, trails in the system. Um, there's, you know, improved lighting and, and, and uh, wayfinding. Uh, we're definitely, you know, from where people live to where the trails are. Or, you know, Bob and I were sitting there uh, at the uh, connection of rigs and it's like a parkway and people were confused <laughs> on, on where the trail was and we're going, oh no, it's right there. Uh, go that way. Uh, and, and that kind of is inhibits people from really feeling comfortable out there is, is you really don't know where you're going. Uh, so anyway, a couple thoughts, Bob, uh, off it over to you just to correct me if I, I misspoke. <laughs> Um, and I will just follow that uh, thought up. It, it, Bob, you can chime in if you do if you do want to. But the ambassador thing um, was an idea that did come up and um, was put forward by Washington Area Bicycle Association. And we were looking at trying to find a way to implement it. For those that, that don't know it, um, there is an existing program called a Trail Ranger. It, we already have rangers in Prince George's County, so we weren't really working with that particular word language, but um, the, the ambassador idea of somebody who could be just out on the trails during a period of time, and if they see somebody that's gotten a flat, they can help you fix a flat. If they see um, glass that's broken on the ground, they clean up the glass. If they see a major issue where a tree limb is down, they know to call the rangers or they know to call the maintenance department. And um, they can then also go, oh, uh, so you're looking for a good ice cream place? Let me tell you where to go. I'll, I'll give you the directions to get there. So that's sort of the idea, um, but it's it's taking a little bit to get there. So Bob, go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm, um, this is great. I'm just kind of letting everybody else uh, talk about the ideas I've been talking about <laughs> for uh, years and some of us have been talking about um, I, I hope to get started on our wayfinding sign plan uh, soon. I've had uh, procurement hiccups, um, but that will uh, include looking at the uh, 911 addressing system to, to clarify that. Th those are uh, uh, given uh, problems that, that we've had and haven't, um, haven't addressed in the recent past. Um, I, I like the, I'm, I'm writing down kind of the conceptual, um, the conceptual things, which is, uh, you know, like address the warts, uh, offer premier services. Um, I think that we're on the cost. We have such an incredible trail system that's been constructed, um, but we haven't fully embraced and created trail culture. And I think what one thing your organization, Aaron, is doing is helping create a trail culture. Um, the, the trolley trail has started to create trail culture. Um, and one thing that's really helpful about the trolley trail is it goes through the center of communities. And um, while it doesn't have a signage system, you can kind of see where you are as you go along because it has those other kinds of clear wayfinding uh, 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 visuals like, oh, I'm in downtown Riverdale. This looks like a small little uh, um, train station downtown. Um, and we need to, uh, with the signage system, kind of connect the park trail system uh, where it isn't as apparent exactly where you are because you don't ever drive to those places and uh, you just go there on the trail and you, go, and you see everything from the opposite direction as when you drive around the community. Um, so I, yeah, I, I, love, I love all these ideas. I, I dropped a couple ideas into the chat box. Um, I think we need to think about how to build on what's happened with COVID, which is that people have gone out exploring. So um, what do people need to go out exploring? And, and since we can't organize rides, I think we should have uh, brochures that show people a ride and describe, take people on a ride or have videos online that take people on uh, a ride and market it to this region. Um, 
day rides, hour rides, um, people who come to visit our area um, for the businesses, but also most people are looking for a new place to go. So we should be marketing ourselves in Northern Virginia and Upper Montgomery County and offering a new place for people to go. Uh, and other than the Anacostia Trail down into the District of Columbia, we still have a lot of space on the rest of the Anacostia system to spread people around um, and um, appeal to the fitness stuff. And how do I, how do we do an outing? Go park here, ride down here and back here, and you can get lunch over here. Um, you know, that kind of very practical um, um, urban uh, recreation in this time of COVID. People are doing a lot more recreation than they normally do because they're not doing as much uh, work. So uh, those are some of my thoughts. Those are, uh, Hey, this is, this is Kyle. Um, hey, just one thing, the park rangers, we're about to um, post a position, a couple of part-time positions for the uh, concept you mentioned about the park ranger to the ambassador. So folks who we can dedicate and have on the trails for more extended periods of time. Um, the, the career staff have been trying to get out there, especially since COVID and how busy things have been. Um, but we're going to try to dedicate a few, um, some of our part-time um, hours to, to hire a minister to be staff to be dedicated uh, to be on the trails for an extended period of time. That's great, Kyle. That's great to hear that you guys are going to be hiring in a position that, that may do some of this. And certainly, let's continue to have that conversation so that we can make sure that we're sharing that information. Um, thank you to everybody hey, that's Aaron. Here. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, this is Eric. Um, I, I wanted to mention that, um, you know, over on July 4th um, in College Park, there was like a it was like a porch fest that happened, you know, and and some of that stuff was along the trolley trail. Um, obviously, you know, socially distant and, you know, masked and, and all that. Um, you know, that, I mean, that's something we can't do that on a big scale, um, you know, certainly during coronavirus. But um, I, I do believe that the Arts Exchange is looking at doing another one uh, in the fall. Um, right. okay. But again, we can't, you know, it's not one of those things that you want, like, a lot of people coming to. <laughs> um, yeah. But um, the other thing I would say is, just ma trail maintenance i mean you know as more people are out and about i mean there are quite a lot of places with potholes and low areas that are pooling water and you know that kind of thing which we all probably know um but that that's going to have to improve over over the coming years you know yeah yeah good point eric thank you um, and, and thank you to the folks who are posting stuff. I see Marion posting about the passport program that used to be there. Um, it, Bob, that was an interesting comment about the video idea because it's actually something Grace and I were just discussing because um, the, the tour that we were going to host was going to be a um, women's suffrage uh, related uh, program where um, we have a board member, Casey, who was going to be, she's going to do a lecture on the 18th. Um, that is um, about the women's suffrage march down U.S. Route 1. And so we were going to do a follow-up tour out on the bike trail. Well, we didn't feel comfortable with it. Casey didn't feel comfortable with it. So I think you guys are looking at the idea of, of possibly even doing a video bike tour that we would then post. So I think those ideas are right on target. And, and I think that speaks to some of the stuff that uh, Tiffany posted, um, you know, in, increased bike tours. Um, you know, last year we ended up having, about, I think, uh, six bike tours on the trails, um, and it's uh, just a real bummer that we haven't been able to do that this year. Um, you know, signage, marking different communities. What else did you have? Lighting. Uh, Melissa m mentioned about um, showing better on Google Maps. I think that would be really good to make sure that we get those Google Maps updated and, and really great. Um, and, and I actually do really like this idea that Bob, you put out there about working with the real estate agents. Um, and I think that speaks to kind of what Karen, um, you know, where she said she was buying because uh, she was on a bike route. So um, maybe making sure that these bike folks, these real estate folks, and, and that actually where this really all started to boil up from in the first place was, is that I had a conversation with the general manager of the hotel in College Park and um, she said how somebody had come to her hotel and 
and I think the, the, the wife was in a conference of some type and the husband was looking for a place to just go and run. And she was like, I don't really know where to go. I don't know what to tell you. And he said, well, that's all right. That's fine. I'll figure it out. And he started off and he went across the street and went down underneath the, onto the trails and suddenly ended up over at Lake Artemisia. And he came back and he says, did you know there's an entire lake here that you can go run around? I didn't know this was, you know, and, and, and this general manager had no idea it was there. And I said, well, you know, this is the kind of thing where maybe we can lead a bike tour of local business employees to show them where these places are um, so that they have that information. Um, so, so that's all some of it. I, I'm seeing a, uh, some other ideas that Karen's uh, throwing out there, um, static maps to create an app, uh, work with Capital Bike Share for free rides, um, uh, wrap a bike with Prince George's County, find the bike, use social media. So lots of great ideas popping up on here. Um, and, and thank you for, for those. Please, again, I think we're coming up right on 11 o'clock, um, but please um, uh, grace at anacostiatrails.org is her email. Um, grace, anything that we've talked about that you want to follow up on? You don't have to. I'm just want to make sure that I've got you. Uh, no, I want to type the email into the chat so that people uh, have it too. There we go. Perfect. Um, and um, please, if you've got other ideas, this... I. I if folks are interested, I think initially we may try to do this on a quarterly basis. Um, that was kind of the schedule that we were running with the um, intermunicipal group was on a quarterly basis to kind of do check-ins and uh, see if folks have other ideas and for Grace to give uh, get some, we're, we're sort of looking to you as our community partners, um, as, as advisors in some ways to help her figure out where we need to go and what we need to think about. And hopefully next time we will be able to bring on um, the bike shops will be able to bring in some businesses we've made communications with. So if you if you know those kinds of people and you've talked with them, um, please invite them out here um, and, and we can get them involved and um, make all these these kinds of connections. So um, anybody final thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah, Aaron, really quickly before we wrap up, I did want to mention the hotel connection. I think there's a huge opportunity there, not only to educate their employees, but also to provide materials in their lobbies. I know a lot of hotels currently have kind of a run around the area map um, that they offer for people looking to go on a run, but it would be great to do something similar with the trail networks. And then it would be a little bit more work, but also looking into Airbnbs. Airbnbs often have that more, you know, cultural aspect, lo uh, local community context where they provide a, a binder with things to do in the communities. So that could be another avenue. And they also have Airbnb experiences. Um, so I would recommend kind of highlighting um, or, or doing some outreach to some of the Airbnbs in the area. Perfect. And, and uh, Sarah's mentioning the, uh, the new big new apartment complexes that are in the area. And so that kind of fits into that same sort of mold. And so we may want to talk to them. Um, and, and Grace, so that you know, Steph has some experience with the hotel industry. So um, she might have some insight that, that you can help lean on. All right. Well, well, thank you all for being here and taking an hour out of your day. Um, it's wonderful to see some of your faces. It's great to hear all your voices. Um, and um, we look forward to chatting about this more um, in the future and um, look for more information to come from Grace as we uh, continue on. All right, thank you much. Thanks everybody. Great, thank you. Thanks. All righty, bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you. Just hang for a second, Grace. Hey, Grace. Yes. Um, that the last comment about the Airbnbs also made me think about um, uh, this region has a lot of people who come for extended stays for job relations. Um, you know, the international organizations that are based here, 